to our June 13th, 2021 Sunday service. We come to worship the Lord and make a joyful noise, for this is the day the Lord has come. Susan is our worship leader, and she has some announcements. And I just wanted to also add, Susan, that Tina will be doing the grocery carts today. Maybe you knew about that. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So as Marion said, Tina has grocery carts if you'd like to purchase any of those. And uh, Women's Guild is continuing to sell uh, Carl's Corner hoagie cards. So see Joanne or Sylvia if you'd like one of those. Um, Peggy and Dennis purchased and planted flowers around the sanctuary. Um, if you haven't come in out front, which many of us don't do, stop by and, and see those. And they are looking for donations to help to defray the cost of those. Flowers are becoming more and more expensive, especially this year after the pandemic. And also, we replaced the exterior lighting fixtures on the side of the church. And um, if you're interested in donating for that, uh, write a check for the church and put oops in the uh, memo area. And we need volunteers if you would like to bring the offering forward during the service. You can see Mary or Carol about that. <laughs>
you give us the gifts of the Spirit, which enable us to have so much. We forget, however, that we have been recipients of other people's generosity. Believing that what we have is ours, we forget that all we have is yours. Forgive us. Help us to remember that being made in your image, we should be as generous as you. Amen. My dear wives, we are promised forgiveness and we are promised a wonderful, abundant grace. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a humble spirit and a contrite heart. By God's steadfast love for us, we are forgiven of all of our sins. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. And we have a blessing of the graduates um, on the very last page of your bulletin today. You'll see uh, the news about that. And we're going to acknowledge the graduates and their families due to other conflicting or um, other, other commitments. Our graduates aren't with us today, but we're, we're going to send them a blessing that would be just as strong as if they were here in person. So let's take a look at our graduates. Devin Fletcher, graduate from Liberty High School, son of Tracy Campbell and Andre Fletcher, grandson of Bill and Linda Campbell. And Linda is here today. Congratulations to Grandma. <laughs> to for Nathaniel Woodruff, a graduate of Southern Lehigh High School, son of Matt and Amanda Cryer Woodruff, grandson of Sam and Susan Cryer. Congratulations, Grandma and Grandpa. How is she crying? Also, Tyler Nance, graduate from Freedom High School, son of Steve and Renee, Stephanides Nance, and grandson of Bob and Jill Stephanides. Congratulations to all of them. And then Connor Ganger is a graduate of Northampton Community College, as well as his brother Devin Ganger, a graduate from Liberty High School, sons of Susan Plum Ganger, and grandsons of Joe and Diane Plum. And so we give our great encouragement and congratulations to our young men. And I'd just like to say a few words. Perhaps they'll watch the video. And we have, I have a blessing I will read as well. But the words of encouragement are, stay steady, continue on with your studies, young men. Young men, give all that you have, and God will bless you. When you use your talents and gifts and keep polishing them daily, they will grow into beautiful, beautiful trees under which the world can find shade, hope, fruit, and wonderful days and nights ahead. We have a song that Sam will sing, Grandfather of Nathaniel. New beginnings, and I think that's what all of these graduates share. Uh, it's so energizing to be a part of that. And even if they aren't um, familiar with us personally, but I think it's, it's up to all of us to encourage, uh, especially in these times, these trying times, to encourage young people as they meet their goals and try to achieve um, and find their place in life. Let my heart be 
and my heart is hard, break the star away, where my heart is cold, warm with the day, when my heart is lost, lead me on your way, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart,
for abundant graces, for courage, enthusiasm, and wisdom. The Major is here for you, young men. Our blessings always, Pastor Marion and your Major family congregation. It seems to me the difference between a successful life and one full of more challenge is when our young people and ourselves forget to, that we live together in community, when we try to do it all alone. And so we pray so much that our young men here will know, as I said in the blessing the letter, reach out. We're here for you. Having that support is what's so critical. And for those of us who understand the faith of God, that is the support and the strength that Jesus Christ gives us, carries us through. And so, these young men, we know that we are here and we carry them in our hearts. Would you join me now and just send, put your hand on your heart and just say a prayer that these young men with their strength and their ability and all their hard work will also know it's, it's a good thing that we should be together in life and work together and let others know when they need assistance. And also assist those that they need on the journey. And again, we raise up our beautiful young men here. Connor, Devin Fletcher. Devin Gangler, Nathaniel, Tyler. And now send those blessings forward. Reach your hand forward and send the blessings. And imagine the young man standing here before us. May God go with you. May God be with you. May you always know we love you here at the Major. We are always here as a home, a spiritual home for you. In Jesus' name, we pray for your protection every day and every night. Amen? Amen. And we'll keep the uh, letters up here so they are blessed uh, during this special time together. This morning, we are reading Psalm 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord! How profound your thoughts! Senseless people do not know. Fools do not understand that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. Our gospel lesson this morning is found in Mark chapter 4, the parable of the growing seed. Jesus also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. The 
parable of the mustard seed. Again, Jesus said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. We have heard God's word. Praise be to God. that I share this song with you.
Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. The Holy Spirit is here with us today. In each of your hearts, there's a divine seed in each of us. Each one that God has brought, has brought forth. We are the miracle of life. The divine seed brought forth as you. Your DNA is specific to you. Isn't that just fabulous? <clears throat> when I worked at Kids Feast, I used to do an experiment with the children. I would bring in seed packets of all different types of seeds that were of different sizes. Some seeds are very tiny little black dots, almost like a poppy seed, and others were a sunflower seed, and then we have tulip bulbs. And I would teach them about how the different seeds, the shape, how long it would take to grow, where they should grow. But what's so fascinating, many of the flower seeds you buy when you open the packet, the zinnias might look a lot like the asters, just little black seeds. And if you put them in your hand, one in one hand and one in the other, and I would say to a child, tell me which is the zinnia. They wouldn't know. But that little seed knows who it is, what it is, and the blueprint of that seed, the divine blueprint on that little seed is a zinnia. Today we learn about the mustard seed. I'm sure most of you have seen a mustard seed, haven't you? It's about the size of a sesame seed, but more brown, not flat like a sesame seed. But it is very small, a little bit bigger than a poppy seed. And yet, one of the largest trees to ever grow comes from that. Of course, you're all very familiar with acorns. Okay? And an acorn from an acorn grows a mighty what? What kind of tree? Oak tree. Our graduates are in a stage of growth and development. At one time, they were newborns. And they grew, and they kept growing, and they needed support, and now they're becoming, you know, independent. They still might need one of those stakes to kind of hold them up and all, but they're coming into their independence. And yet, you know, there are studies about trees that trees are social beings. Trees like to live in groups. And when they look at understructures of forests, of certain types of trees particularly, they do better when they're in groups because they have the support of one another. If you've ever gone to an arboretum or Longwood Garden, Longwood Gardens was first created a few centuries ago as an arboretum. A man who was from the Delaware area came there and began to grow trees. No, that, I'm sorry, that was the second owner. But um, when he got there, he said, we need, to do, we need to do more here. But it was trees. And we stand as seeds growing into something more. But the totality of who you are exists in the seed. Everything about the zinnia seed is there. We can't teach it how to be a zinnia. We can't make it be a zinnia. We can't change it into something else because we want a rose. It is as God created it to be. And you are created as God wanted you to be. So much of our lives we struggle to be something that we're not. I'm very tall. As a little girl, I wasn't. I got really tall in college. <laughs> it was unusual. I didn't want to quite be this tall, but guess what? It is as it is. It is as God wanted. And now that I do the work I do, being tall can be helpful. You can see me a little better. <laughs> 
but we find other qualities in ourselves. Perhaps we wish we weren't so sensitive. We wish we had a musical ability. We wish we had an artistic ability. We wish we had a practical ability. We can learn new things. We can become many, many new ways. But the truth of who we are, the miracle, the divine seed, the nature of who we are remains. I have eight brothers and sisters, and when we were children, my mother would always say, one of the secrets to life is finding work where your natural personality can blossom. Find a place where you can be truly yourself. Just yesterday, my oldest brother, who became the patriarch of our family once my father passed, we were children. He was 16, I was 7. So, he says to me, so Marion, where is your church? Now because of the pandemic, I haven't gotten to see my brother very much. And we sat and talked about you and this church. And I said to my brother, Bob, after all the years of my living, I finally found the place that mom used to tell me about. Or I my natural personality fits. I don't have to hold back my emotion. I don't have to push. Yes, I give you my best. I try to blossom and bloom and give shade. But what I mean is I can be me. Life can be a challenging journey and we can't always be somewhere where we just feel a natural fit. But if we're lucky, there are moments and times and places that it happens. My youngest sister, Eileen, my little special needs sister, instead of using the word disability, I like to use the word diff ability with an F. Different. God knew when he made Eileen, he gave her a di different divine map. Her seed was going to be different. Down syndrome, youngest. When she was born, it wasn't first noted that she had Down syndrome. This was back in 1961, I'm sorry, 1958. And when it was realized that she had a problem, the doctor came to my parents and said, Bob and Betty, we think maybe you already have eight children, and Betty, you've had some health issues. Perhaps you should place Eileen in a home, permanent. This is not what my parents felt called to do. And my father gathered us all together from ages 18 to, uh, let's see at that time, I guess 15 to 2, and said to us, God has sent us a special angel. He felt that we would be able to take care of And before she came home from the hospital, my mother sent flowers to my, to my mom. And he chose eight yellow roses and one white. And he said, Betty, these eight represent all our beautiful children. And the white represents Eileen, our angel. What makes a yellow rose yellow? and a white rose white. There is a divine plan on that plant. It's meant to be what it is. And to this day, Eileen, who January 2020, we were told she would live one more night. She's still with us. Does her little soul and her plan and her plant and her tree, her flower continues to bloom and we continue to learn from her and be loved by her and grow with her. You are a beautiful flower. Imagine if you might, which flower are you? Which color are you? 
Or perhaps you'd like to think of yourself as a tree, a mustard tree, a fig tree. How about a cherry tree? I used to climb the cherry trees and have lots of cherries when I was friends with, when we were friends with my neighbors. I still am friends with your children. We were allowed to sit up in the cherry tree. Are you a willow tree? Are you soft? Mighty oak? Are you evergreen? Steady. No matter what happens, the green continues. God has a divine imprint within you. It started in utero and continues on. And don't be mistaken. It continues today. Older trees are deeply valued, are they not? In a world where youth is the hallowed thing so much of the time, a tree is valued for its age. And people get very upset when a great tree falls. I want to share with you that we had two great trees, two great beautiful people of our church community return to God. Their lives were completed, they returned to God. We have our flowers today. Our flowers at the altar here are for Elizabeth Aggregate. I had the honor to lead her service at the Connell Fuel Home on Wednesday with her beautiful husband, Lewis and her son Michael, Karen, his wife and children and grandchildren and family. Elizabeth was the matriarch and heart of the Applegate family. This is what Karen and the family told me. And then these flowers here are in memory of Donald Eason, another strong, beautiful pillar of our church. Betsy and his children and family, we were all here yesterday. God has taken them back to themselves. And you know the story about the seed, that until it falls into the earth and dies, it cannot live. When our time here is finished, it will appear that our flower, our tree, dies. But it is not true. We are just returning to the great place from where we came. And all that we have been continues in a new way. Just as Don and Betty have gone into the heaven to watch over us, to protect us, I talk to you often about the communion of saints. They are with us. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and Creator God. Our parents, our grandparents, siblings, children that have passed before us. Their light shines, their leaves spread out, and their blossoming fragrance continues. They watch over us. I'm certain. My father died <clears throat> when we were all children. He was 47. It was a great tragedy. But what he taught us, the beauty of who he was, we still sit under his shame. And my mother too. Our graduates have found success through their own efforts and their own work, but also the gifts within them that God has given them that they have worked with, and the love of you, their parents, their grandparents, and the church community. We all want family. We grow better in groups, too. We need a moment, we need a moment of independence, yes. But we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. You are needed, you are beautiful, and I see the beauty of who you are. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Amen. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we offer you our gifts. The work of our hands have brought forth return, and we return those gifts to you. We love you, we thank you, we are grateful to you. Please accept our gifts that we offer with sincere hearts. Amen, in Jesus' name. My dear people, it is time that your prayers be lifted up to the Lord. We have lifted up our graduates, and I'd also like to lift up their grandparents, their parents, their family and friends, and all of us here who love them so much. We thank you, Lord, for the joyous accomplishments in a world where there's challenge. We're so grateful for the beauties, the joys, the sense of hope that our graduates bring. Thank you for the miracle of our graduates. And now, let us place our hands on our heart and think of who you might like to pray for today, who is in your heart and on your heart. I pray myself today for Thanksgiving for my sister Eileen, who's taught us so much. For my children, Michael and Carrie, who are moving forward in their education and work and studies as they continue to offer their work in the world. I thank you for each of you here today. Those who assist me in ministry, those who are faithful in being part of our community, those who are not here today, but are part of our family. A special prayer for Don and Betty Applegate, Don Eason, as they go to the gates of heaven. Is there something that you want to speak to God in regard to yourself? He did tell us to love our neighbor as ourself. And so as we ask for our neighbor, we also may ask for ourself. Come, Lord Jesus, show us the way. Show us how to be the person you call us to be more fully each day. Let our branches continue to grow, let the flowers continue to blossom through the sun, through the rain. We hold up all those from our sister churches, the clergy and members who need prayer as well. We know, Lord, you promised to answer our prayers, and so we thank you now for the forthcoming blessings before they appear. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I feel God's spirit in this place. And together, let us pray the Lord's Prayer that he taught us. The spirit of the Lord is with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And my dear ones, before I commission you, I would like to ask Linda Campbell, Linda, can you come forward and receive the letter for Devin, please? <coughs> And what does Devin, does he call you Grandma, Grammy? Grammy. Grammy. Okay, here comes our Grammy. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very excited about that. Congratulations. Tell him we're thinking of him. I will. Sam and Susan, Grandma and Grandpa, well, I don't know what does what does Nathaniel call you? 
Grandfather Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> Grandfather Samuel. No. That's a joke. Grandpa? Grandpa? Here's Nathaniel's letter. Please give it to him with our love. And congratulations, Sam. And Grandma? What does he call you, Susan? Grandma. Okay. And we'll be sure that the other letters are received by our graduates. And I commission you now. Go out and be the beautiful tree, the beautiful flower, the wise and loving people that God has imprinted on your heart. The world needs you. We all need you. We need one another. It is good we were not to be alone. The Creator made man, he said, it is not good for him to be alone. We are meant to travel with one another. Go, hold another hand, lift another smile for someone, lift the spirit, and know that Jesus is with you every step of the way. Amen? Amen. And now your benediction. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. So wherever you are, God is. And where God is, all is well. You are a blessing, you are beautiful, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Peace, peace, my friends. Amen? Amen. Amen.